Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today I'm talking about stat farming. This is a concept where you farm for stats and you farm for high value stats. But let me first build a case and show you why this it's important for you to do so. And then I think it will make your build journey easy. Now, I have to admit this video is for most beginners or even people who are just very, quite casual in playing this game. I just want to say that this game has been made much better for you because now you can actually farm with purpose not like the uh, you know previous patches where we will farm and be like well that was a waste of a whole day but now you can farm with some with some sensibility and so let's take a stat like explosive damage explosive damage is a stat where you know you're you know applying explosions to your enemies but now you want those explosions to hurt very well now i don't know what the base value is but i just know that more is better <laughs> okay with explosive damage more is better just you know follow that that sequence and then you know we can go on from there i want people to say oh but you know that was that no i'm not dealing with the math here today i just know more is better so the explosive damage stat is actually available on some brand sets. So we'll start there. On the brand set level, explosive damage is a stat for One Piece, Channel Light Industries brand items. So you have six possible options. So you're building explosive damage, 10%. You write it down, 10%. Where am I going to find this 10% from? I go to my map, I hit R, I'm looking. Channel Light, Channel Light, Channel Light, bam, Tidal Basin. Now, I know it's a little more, you know, frustrating to have to deal with Tidal Basin because you have to knock out your invaders, but hey, knock them out you need explosive damage don't you go get your explosive damage who knows you might even get a china light industry item out here and so you know exactly what you're looking for okay so a lot of people are usually caught up in ah i can't find a perfect china light piece and blah 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 blah. and i'm like yeah you won't uh you probably might it might not be a big problem but if you set your mind on just finding the perfect china light piece you'll be frustrated, but you're only farming stats. And so that reduces the frustration. It even lowers your expectation because you're like, yeah, I know I'm probably not going to get something good. And maybe you might get something good. The second aspect too is knowing, okay, where else can I find explosive damage? Now we're going to go to the, we're going to go to base of uh, inside the base of ops. And I'll show you another source of explosive damage. That's also easily available to you. If say you're building explosive damage, and that is here in your specialization for the demolitionist, there's a stat that gives you, where is it? Increased explosive damage, 25%. So 25% plus my channel light, I'm looking at 35% explosive damage. We will then make our way to saying, okay, where else can we find explosive damage? I'm glad you asked the fourth and the fifth and the se seventh time. And that is on ongoing directive chess pieces. Now, this is a much more difficult find. Okay. So before you even get to this point, make sure that you have already said, okay, my brand set gives me 10% good. My uh, specialization can also give me 20, 25% if you decide to run that specialization. And then you can say, okay, what other brand sets can I find it on? And then you can say, okay, this. Now you look, ongoing directive can sometimes roll you about 20% explosive damage. And then you're like, well, that might be a difficult one to get. And this is another aspect of knowing reality from fiction. Because if you say, well, yeah, I'm going to go farm for this, you might get frustrated. I think a better approach is to looking and saying, what talent can give me this same stat. Talents will be easier for you to farm than specific attribute roles, in my opinion. So you look and say destructive, which gives you 40% dam uh, explosive damage. Destructive can be rolled, and then you ask yourself what other brand, what, what uh, brand pieces or gear pieces can destructive be rolled on? It could be rolled on knee pads, it could be rolled on the mask. I don't have one oh, there, it can roll on a mask. It could be rolled on a chess piece. Do I have a chess piece somewhere? Somebody? Somebody? Yep. It could be rolled on a chess piece. I think it could be rolled on a holster as well. It could be rolled on a holster. Believe, yeah. Just trust me. It could be rolled on the gloves. Just trust me on that one too. And it could be rolled on your backpack. So you can get 40% explosive damage. It does not stack. So you, you only need one. You get one and you go from there. In fact, ideally... You'll be needing a uh, mask that has destructive, whatever you want, and then be on a China Light item. It's not impossible to get. All you have to do is just run your China Light missions, do that over and over again, and then say we do our total 25% from our um, 
specialization, 10% from the brand set, 40% from the talent. We're now looking at 75% explosive damage. Now, if you are lucky and fortunate and you get yourself one of these 20% or maybe more, now you have reached 90 something percent explosive damage. Do you see how you can start building your stats? Also, you can find these explosive damage items um, on mods. Here on this utility mod, I have a 3% explosive damage mod. This is going to be a little challenging to find. I'm not going to lie. I just was fortunate and I kept it from a while ago. And so I wouldn't prioritize farming this unless I am done farming where I can get these stats more tangibly and easily. And once I get that stat, then I can then say, all right, I'm going to go farm mods. We have mod allocations here in Foggy Bottom and here in Judiciary or Federal Triangle. Yeah, Federal Triangle. So you go there and then you farm once you're done with that. Now, you can start farming from wherever you want. You may have these pieces already available. You look in your stats. Oh, I looked at this. I saved this piece the other day. And you put your build together. So that's what we call stat farming. Another stat that you can also look at and how you can farm this stat is farming brand sets that actually have high roles in terms of stats. And what do I mean by that? Well, I'll have to give you a little spill. There's what we call stat allocation. Stat allocation is where you have, you know, multiple attributes on a piece of gear set. This was taught to me by my subscribers, by the way. So if you have these two buckets, these two pools, the stats that drop with them can just roll in whatever numbers in them. And so usually when you have multiple stats, there's usually kind of like a, an artificial cap as to how these items will drop. Now, because the cap for damage release has been increased, you might get a low drop that is like 40%. Back in the day, 40% was high. 45, 46% was, I think, the, the max you could get in terms of damage to release that I saw anyways. But now with the new patch, you can get about 50%, 55, 56, but you can get them in brand sets that have lower stat allocation in the sense that they only roll one stat or one less stat than other brand sets. So Suckle of Concern and Petrov, you notice if you pick them up, they usually will just distribute their stats and the numbers are quite low. And so I think it's because of the stat allocation. That's just what I, I think, I think. But I've never seen a Suckle of Concern mask come with anything more than like 18 or 20% damage to elites. You would have to go and actually add damage to elites to them to make them actually viable if you're going to use them. And so what you want to do is prioritize these brand sets. And there are two of them in this category. They are Alp Summit Armament and Eraldi um, Holdings brand set. They usually come with one less stat on all their pieces. The backpacks uh, come with only two stats. The chest pieces come with only two stats. The knee pads do come with one stat, which is the knee pads are kind of nice. And then the holster can come with like maybe sometimes one stat or without a uh, let me see. Yeah, sometimes with a stat with the talent uh, and one stat, but always one stat. And then in some cases, yeah, I think even without a talent, sometimes will come without a talent. So these are the items that you can prioritize. The gloves also come with one one roll and sometimes they'll roll a decent roll, like a higher roll. So you want to prioritize farming them. And so you go and say, OK, I want the highest possible roll of damage to elites. Well, you're most likely going to get it faster on an Alp Summit piece or on an Eraldi piece. So you come to your map and you farm those areas or missions that have them. This is how you build your stats. Talent stats, you know, are quite arbitrary. If you want if you want hard hitting, which is 25% damage to elites, that can be rolled on any brand set. Uh, pretty much, you can roll it on a mask, you can roll it on your gloves, you can roll knee pads, chest piece, and even holster if you want. But usually, you don't have to stress much about it. Before, we used to have to pad this, you know, stack it upon, stack it upon. But now, it's not necessarily a problem. And so that's how you do your stat farming. Another thing, too, that a lot of people may not necessarily pay attention to is in terms of stat farming, you can also look at very unique places to get them. Like I just showed you, you can get explosive damage, you know, on your utility mods. But let's say you were looking for crit chance and crit damage and you were running, you know, very specific weapons, maybe not even, you know, an assault rifle, maybe some weapons that are like, eh, maybe not even an SMG, but you want to go crit, ch crit chance, crit damage. What you can do is you can actually come look at your blueprints. Um, many people fail to realize how valuable their blueprints are. I mean, they're even where they, they have them equipped. They don't even pay attention to them. 
but they are very, very powerful mods that can change the game for you. Headshot damage, all these stats just sitting there for you to just go ahead and grab. The only downside about this is Massive needs to put what the heck these things actually do when you craft them, because not until you craft them are you going to see the weapons that they actually fit in, which in my opinion is just asinine, okay? Straight up, asinine. They need to work. They need to show you before you craft them so that that way you say, okay, I mean, I'm looking for, you know, these sites or these scopes. Now, in terms of the magazines, if you know your, cal your you know, your, if you know your, um, what do they call it? Your calibers and all that stuff, you can tell. But in some cases, you don't know. And so this is another place that you can go and look for stats. So I hope this video was kind of helpful. Um, you know, there are many, many ways to get explosive damage. And I use explosive damage because I feel like, you know, it's one of the really cool ones. If you, by any chance, have, you know, having farmed all that stuff and you're like, you know, I want more explosive damage, then you can go for exotics that have explosive damage. The Merciless does have, a, a, you know, explosive damage has been buffed a lot. While holstered, landing a shot has a 5% chance to deal 100% damage as explosive damage how that factors into the math i have no idea but i just know it does do a lot of damage uh, i need to go back and reinvestigate the math but you can then start adding and then making a case for having a build that does a lot of explosive damage even though you can't leverage everything but there are paradigms that you can use in order to do that i hope that was helpful for you guys i'll try and do a part two maybe using other kinds of stats that you can stat farm and just talk about the strategies on doing that so that, you know, people who may not be going for explosive damage, perhaps they want to go for headshot damage, can see, uh, you know, ways that they can implement the same system using brand sets, using mods, um, you know, using, you know, different attributes that roll in different random places at high numbers and then putting it together for a build. All right. That's all I have for today. Veterans, if I missed anything, please help me out in the comment section and let me know what you guys think so far. And I guess I'll see you in the next video. Peace.